So, uh, so it appears that we are getting three main classes of sets so far, finite. They all vary in size, but they behave very similarly. Uh, and then, um, and then countable, and then possibly, the, what I've been suggesting is there are uncountable sets. Okay, so so not much to be said about the finite sets. We we have had enough of those. Uh, then we define countable sets as the one uh, equivalent to uh, under bijections to uh, the integers, or you can just as well, just as just as good would be uh, equivalent to uh, to natural numbers. Okay, so which is kind of easy because there is only one and one uh, one way to go to infinity. Uh, so, so that that's more convenient. So you can think in terms of sequences. So sequences are countable, uh, infinite. Okay. Um, not to be confused, however, the uh, sequence as a uh, well se sequences with what you saw in calculus, they could repeat repeat themselves. Okay. So that's not what we're talking about. The set uh, is supposed to have literally infinitely many set, uh, infinitely many elements. That will make it infinite. Uh, and sequence, like I said, even though it has a, it has infinitely many entries, values, uh, it might start start re to repeat itself. Or if we just have a bunch of one, 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 it's a sequence, infinite sequence, but it's not uh, an infinite set. Okay, so so we established uh, relations, equivalences of, of of the integers with other sets, uh, odd, even, odd, and even separately, uh, natural numbers, as I just mentioned, uh, the divisibility also uh, revealed. And, uh, and finally, that was the uh, p p most profound result, uh, the equivalence with, the, with the rational numbers. So pairs, pairs of integers, as, as soon as we understood uh, that uh, uh, the rational, uh, rational numbers are simply pairs of, of integers, uh, then we placed them on the plane, and then we, uh, here at the bottom, we, had, uh, we counted them. Literally, we, we uh, plotted a sequence of uh, infinite sequence of, of entries uh, uh, for us to uh, cover all of these uh, pairs on the xy plane. So integer valued points on the xy plane uh, have been have been counted as uh, infinite uh, um, uh, countable set, an infinite countable set. Okay, so so that does it for us mostly. Uh, there there's there will be some uh, other uh, uh, infinite sets elsewhere, but but this is enough to get to get started. Um, and now we are moving to sets that are more um, way, weighty, if you like. Uh, so as you can see, that that's what I, I circled on the right uh, uh, suggests what, what's happening. And the difference between integers at the top, very sparse, and uh, uh, and the reals at the bottom uh, seems very uh, dramatic. But it is it becomes less dramatic once you add uh, once you add the uh, the rationals. Okay, so once again, z all, all apart. Uh, the rationals are dense, which means that you know, in one sense, one way to look at it, you zoom in on the integer, on the on the. If you zoom in on an integer, you always have one element. If if you zoom zo zoom on a point away from the integer, you got nothing. Okay, if you zoom in on the uh, on the uh, rational numbers, you will get the same picture. You keep zooming in, and there there are just as many as you had when you had in the beginning. Okay, so. Uh, every no, no matter how small an integral you pick, there will be infinitely many integers there. Okay, so remember, if we divide by two, uh, halfway between two uh, the rationals, you still have a rational number. So the same property of density is the reals, except well, there are no gaps. There are there are uh, remember uh, there are no, there are no gaps, but there are holes rather. Okay, so so if you take uh, if you take uh, the reals and subtract the rational numbers, you end up with irrational numbers. And on the first day of classes, we, we proved that the square root of two is 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 an irrational number. So it actually actually takes some work to prove that uh, that that such such numbers exist in the first place. And it was a big discovery for the ancient Greeks. And then and then to, and then it turns out that there are actually a lot of them. Not a lot of them, but what we're suggesting here is there are not a lot of them. There are more irrational numbers than rational numbers. Right. So if we demonstrate that uh, the reals is not a countable set, then you take an uncountable set, the real, subtract all the irrational numbers, give you irrational numbers, and you what you're left with, uh, the, that, that set will be still irrational. 
because if you take rational, uh, rational and irrational, if you have both of them were countable, then you put two sets that are countable together, and that will be still a countable set. We saw already that a that couple of times. Okay, so, so once again, we're gonna, if we can demonstrate that reals are um, uncountable, then we also demonstrate that irrational numbers are uncountable, and that, uh, that also uh, provides um, a certain insight into, uh, into um, well, how things work out, especially in calculus. So the example that I tried to show you, the, the challenges of, 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 of things we face, uh, is, is this. This one uh, is easy. Uh, establishing a uh, um, um, uh, bijection between uh, uh, positive numbers and all real numbers, logarithm, okay? And, uh, uh, but this is, uh, this is hard. We only add uh, one extra point, but it is much harder to think of a, of a bijection between them. Uh, and the, the reason is because we, we are not, the why it was so easy, because we were able to provide a continuous function, so that logarithm you take it from, uh, from calculus, okay? But that extra point is, is, is troublesome, and, uh, and there is no continuous function between these two. So, and so, so then you have to look for, uh, for something else, uh, something, entirely, uh, something entirely different. Okay, so one more example of, of, of uh, um, uh, examples that of surrounding the reals. So uh, uh, these are the reals. Uh, we have uh, intervals, no matter how short. Uh, open intervals we have, we can easily demonstrate, and we have. Uh, they also have the same cardinality, okay? So uh, array it has the same cardinality and open intro has the same cardinality. If the, uh, it is closed, it is more complicated, but, but still uh, can be done at some point. But let, let's, just, uh, let's just take the uh, open ones, and then we have two uh, examples, two bijections that came directly from, um, uh, from, uh, from calculus, okay? So uh, another example, however, is, is more, more challenging, and that is... Uh, r versus r squared. In other words, a line, real line, in the plane. So is r, squ r squared, the plane, larger than line or smaller or, or the same? If you had to guess, well, if you, if you had to guess. What was the question again? Uh, which uh, is uh, R squared larger? Yeah. That's my guess. Okay. Uh, does this help? We had the same question asked about integers versus the plane of integers. <coughs> and it turned out that it has the same cardinality. Uh, so it, it doesn't mean that it exactly has to happen, but, but at least it suggests that uh, um, sort of squaring a set, uh, after all, what is, why, why, why is it called R squared, or this one could be called Z squared, because it is, after all, a Cartesian product of Z with itself. That, that's what a plane of, uh, with uh, in, uh, integer value points on the plane, what, what is it altogether? It is a Cartesian product of Z with itself. Okay, so and then uh, and then we discovered they are taking a square of z does not increase its, its cardinality. It's, it has the same cardinality. Uh, uh, so so that is uh, so cardinality of q is the cardinality of z cross z. Same as cardinality is z. Okay. Well, it turns out uh, same thing happens with uh, with reals. So once again, squaring something uh, uh, it does not. This is what it is. R cross r. A pairs of numbers. Remember, um, uh, Cartesian product of of uh, of a uh, real line with itself gives us the plane. Okay, and so so uh, single numbers here, just x, and here pairs x and y, and it does seem there there are so much more of them. But you you can argue that uh, uh, that that there is an equivalence between them. So uh, the uh, the cardinality of r is the same as cardinality of r cross r. And uh, uh, the, the plan, however, does not work out. This is a nice break for us uh, to discover this kind of spiral, right, going around and covering every, every integer uh, point on the plane. Well, it's not going to work anymore. Uh, that idea doesn't, doesn't work anymore because, uh, because the, uh, so the, the, if you take a line and you try, you try to cover the whole, the, you're trying to cover the whole plane with nothing but a line. 
it's not entirely impossible, and you may have heard of um, uh, space filling curves. Space filling curves. So it's a curve that literally fills the plane. Uh, well, maybe uh, you, you can look it, look it up. Um, um, they they look at a variety of ways, uh, and uh, so so at least you can mark, make an argument like that. But there is an easier way uh, to to get to the same point, and that is uh, to uh, through through the real uh, through the um, representing real numbers uh, through decimal through decimals. So x so decimal representations. So every number uh, is represented by uh, a bunch of uh, infinitely many digits. Maybe at some point they start to become zeros, but it's still infinite decimal representation. So maybe A1, A2, A3, A4, AN, and so on. Okay, so that's a decimal representation of a, of a single a real number. So uh, can I make two real numbers from one? Can I make, so I have one decimal representation, the sequence, can I make two from one sequence, can I make two sequences from one? Divide in half. Divide in half what? Sequence. Okay. Uh, no, no, it's not about the limit. Um, uh, what I need is just two, two, uh, two sequences, say, uh, let me let me call it maybe. Let's call it U. And then I need X, which is say X1, X2, X3, Xn. Y is equal to Y1, Y2, Y3, Yn. Okay. Well, let's call it A. Okay. So so I have I I need to establish a bijection. Uh, between uh, between these, on the one hand, I have A's here. I have A's here, and I have XY's there, pairs. So singles on the left, pairs on the right. Uh, so it seems that I have way more numbers on the right than on the left. But can I make two sequences for one or, or one sequence for two, going back and forth? A sequence of digits, right? The what are those A1, A2, A3? Uh, they are simply digits between zero and, and, and nine, right? So, uh, well, the idea is to split the sequence somehow into two. Can you? Split a sequence. Well, but when you have you remember that we have learned enough by now to know that infinity is just uh, has so much room that uh, well you, you've heard of remember that um, uh, what's what's the, word, the name of it uh, uh, the the uh, the Hilbert Hilbert Hotel Hilbert Hotel anyone it's a hotel that uh, always full and always have have vacancies why because it has infinitely many rooms. So you have infinitely many rooms. One, two, three, these are the number of rooms. N, N plus one. Okay, so it's full. It's full, so they all occupy. And then a new guest arrives. What happens? What? No. No, they, they don't have time to build a new, <laughs> a new room. No, they just move everybody like this. Everybody moves to the next room. And who goes to room number one? And room number one becomes vacant. Well, that's not good. No, we, that's what we want. I so we, want the, the guest now has, oh. has a room. There you go. Now they're all full. That's called Hilbert, Hilbert Hotel. What hotel is it? Hilbert. It was uh, a Hilbert, David Hilbert, you know, the mathematician. Uh, 
So, so that's Hilbert Hotel. Why, why it's all only possible? Be, it is only possible because we have infinitely many rooms. Okay? So, if you have two guests arrive, so you two did two moves like this. Okay? So that, that's the weird thing about, about infinity is that, that uh, you, you can do, you can never, ha can never happen uh, in, in, the, uh, in the, the different situation. Uh, uh, but now, the irrelevant question, I, I thought you, you've heard this, this example before, uh, but certainly uh, think about it. So, uh, but let, let's jump beyond this, uh, a harder problem, what if uh, infinitely many guests arrive simultaneously? What do you do? So the, here's the operation is n goes to n plus 1, right? That, that was the original idea of Hilbert. One uh, guest arrived, and each, uh, each uh, person living in the nth room moves to n plus first room, mm -hmm. right? So that is pretty much, and that, what is it? it is, this is the bijection. It is a bijection between, between the rooms and the, room, the, and the room, rooms minus 1, okay? So they have the same size. You take all, all the natural numbers, remove one, you have just as many. Okay, so and the, how do we know? Here's the bijection. N goes to N plus 1. Okay, that, that's our function. Well, maybe I'll, I'll use this standard notation here. Uh, the, this is F of N is equal to N plus 1. That's my bijection. Okay, so if we simultaneously a family of five arrives, and well, not family, but a group of five, and we want to put them in five rooms, we just move n goes to n plus five. Okay, so no, no trouble. Uh, but what if have infinitely many, infinitely many, countably many, well, let's be careful, because if, if <laughs> a whole continuum of people arrives, then we're in trouble. Uh, so countably many guests arrive somewhat, suddenly, and when, once again, all the rooms are full. How can we make room for countably many guests, new guests. There is a, there is a bijection. Where should, uh, a person living in the nth room, where should it go, he go? No, then you have only one, one room opened up. N plus N? N plus N, N plus N, also known as 2N. So, uh, so in other words, uh, you move uh, N step forward, okay? And then, so, so then there will be half of the room suddenly uh, vacated. Half of the room, the, uh, the uh, uh, first room is vacated, the third. Uh, so odd numbered rooms are now vacant, right? We multiply everything by two. So everybody has a place for sure. So there, that, that's we've seen this before. Uh, but every 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 person in the in the uh, uh, living in the in the room will have a new room for for him ready. Uh, however, odd numbered rooms will not be taken. Does that make the even number rooms a lot more crowded? No, there are infinitely many of them. That's crazy. Well, that's infinity. Um, uh, everything is infinite, unfortunately. <laughs> so you need also infinitely, uh, infinite amount of resources to build it. In, uh, maids probably, yeah, infinitely many maids. And um, yeah, I don't know. It's, it's an abstraction, but it's a good one. So, uh, so, uh, so the, once again, another bi bijection, uh, bijection, but uh, uh, to bijection between different sets. So this was from N to N minus one. Okay, so that was the bijection, removing one from the natural numbers if we start counting at one, and then we create a bijection. Okay, now we are doing uh, a bijection into the even numbers. So even numbered, uh, even numbered uh, rooms are, uh, are uh, re reused, um, and uh, since there are as many rooms uh, even as overall, then we are not losing anybody, we are anybody, not putting anybody together in one room. So everybody has the same room. But you have to inf move infinitely many people at the same time if you have a new, uh, new set of infinitely many guests uh, that have arrived. Okay? 
So, uh, so that's that's that, that's how it works out, and that's the idea of uh, uh, of um, uh, that's that's the idea of why we have so much room with infinities, and we can solve that problem that we that we're starting here. Uh, I'm not sure if there is any Hilbert quote hotel interpretation uh, here. Um, so this is just a, to illustrate the analysis that we did yesterday uh, uh, and the day before yesterday. Uh, so now we're facing a different problem, uh, and that is, what is it? Uh, no, no, the, now we are talking about reals. So this is applicable to, this This is all about countable. This is all about countable, and uh, so, so one countable, the other countable, we can we can uh, arrange them, accommodate so everybody. So those are all countable? Uh, these sets are countable, yes, these sets, but uh, not these, so. So I just, I digressed, not digressed, regressed. I went back to countable. So these are not uncountable. Still to be demonstrated, but uh, uh, these are all uncountable. And, but we want to show that uh, the real numbers, uncountable, or the plane of, of numbers, uh, both are not just uncountable, but equal and countable. Uncountable. So that we can, we, we need to demonstrate that there is a, a bijection. No, we're going to prove it. I think we, we have we have time uh, to prove it eventually. I just want to I want to establish this first. Uh, so the similarity sort of between countable and countable sets. So squaring uh, some so countable gives you still countable. Uh, if you square uncountable, it's still uncountable. How do, how do you know those are countable? Uh, well, we, we, which ones? The ones that you have in the box that says countable. Yeah. How do you know those are countable? Well, natural numbers are countable. Okay. Okay. Uh, so remember the bijection. We we had that bijection exactly. Uh, uh, what was it? Uh, bijection between the z and n uh, that was established. Um, n and even uh, even even greater than zero. That's a bijection. Okay. So uh, so the the answer is uh, so the go, going back to uh, or forward rather uh, to uncountable numbers, real numbers. Uh, that rep are represented by infinite sequences of, of, of digits um, uh, from 0 to 9, okay? And then pairs of, of those are represented by uh, two infinite sequences uh, of digits. So how do we get from the other? We either combine two uh, digits together, two sequences into one. How? Like this. So we interlace them. Take two sequences in and interlace them. And that will give you one sequence. Okay, and, and vice versa, you can split it in the exact same way. So, so this is how it works out. So f of a, f of a, which is uh, f of uh, a1 dot a2, a3, uh, this is what, how we produce a pair, uh, a1, a3, a5. So odd numbered entries in my sequence followed by, that, that's cr that creates, creates a real number. And then if we pick the even numbered, entries in my sequence, that creates uh, me uh, another um, um, a real number, okay? And then, uh, well, if, if, if uh, needs be, I could create the inverse. So I have, say, as I, as I put it, x1, x2, x3. Uh, so if I, uh, now I'm doing the inverse. And then uh, uh, y1, y2, y3. I combine these together by interlacing them. So I'm going to have x1, y1, x2, y2, x3, y3, like this. Okay, so that's that's the proof, uh, or at least the, an idea of the proof. Uh, there, there, as always with decimal representation, there might might be issues with uh, whether or not you have uh, uh, you have all the um, the ambiguity of representation. Remember, 0 0.9999 is the same as one. Okay, so uh, there might be uh, an issue there. Uh, that to be sorted out, uh, but that, but that's the idea. Why does that prove it's countable? No, I, I I didn't say it's countable. I I only I'm only saying this. That uh, uh, the the magnitude of um, the the cardinality of, of of R and R cross R is the same. So is it a line or is it plane? Plane? They have the same number of points. Uh, on, on, on countability, which is, in a way, 
Well, it is very important, obviously. Um, then it comes next. Any, any questions about this last construction? Uh, splitting a sequence into two as well as uh, putting it back together in the same manner. You can certainly see how, how these two are inverses of each other. So interlace, split. Okay. Uh, so the the uh, the actual theorem is uh, um, is uh, um, well let, let let me actually let let's understand what is that uh, uh, that we're trying to show. So we are talking about uh, we want to show that R is uncountable. Okay. Well. Well, let's let's that's fine. Theorem. Theorem R is uncountable. So once again, we just take an integral, as I have, have been doing. I will just concentrate on decimals uh, uh, between 0 and 1. OK, so uncountable, uh, the idea is, uh, is quite brilliant. Uh, and uh, uh, so I try to, with every proof we have been doing, I will try, I will try to, uh, you know, uh, try to drive it, do it in such a way that we sort of discover the, the proof. Uh, from common sense, from previous experience, or just by, by guessing, well, this one is not like that. This one is really clever, to say the least. Okay, so the proof is actually um, um, is by contradiction. Okay, so we assume, uh, suppose that uh, R is countable, so there is there is a bijection from F from the uh, from natural numbers to the reals. Well, uh, let's pick a, like I said a sequence. Zero one. Okay, so what does it mean? It actually can be interpreted very, very uh, visually. Uh, uh, the, and, and always, actually, every, every time you speak of, of, uh, of, um, of a set being countable, it, is, uh, it means that it's a list. Mm -hmm. You can turn it into a list. That's what natural numbers uh, do to you. So if you can have that, that's, that's what a, a bijection is. So you, you go one, two, three, yeah. So you're going to show that zero, one can't be made into a list? That's right. Because is this just because the decimals like 0 0.000, like you can like do that and like make small numbers all in between? Is that what you're saying? No, no, no. The the idea is 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 is, uh, is impossible to guess. So certainly I would impossible. would not have guessed. What do you mean by what? Well, I mean it is it is it is uh, insightful. The proof is is not something you can you can arrive to on your own. I don't think so. That's I, I certainly couldn't. Uh, so, so, but uh, once you have a list, wait, well, let, let's let's try. It. So, we have a list. So, uh, zero one is a list. So, it is like uh, x one, x two, x three, x four, x five. That's my list of. Well, I don't want to use. Uh, fine. Okay. So, the, the, these are my uh, my real numbers. So, all together, they give me r. So, there are countably many of them. Uh, and all the real numbers, well, not, not all real numbers, but uh, let's, let's keep it simple and just between 0 and 1, okay? So all the real numbers between 0 and 1 are put in the form of a list. And we are going to use the decimal representations. Okay, so point. Now, this one is a bit tricky uh, because uh, there, is a, there, is a, uh, each, uh, there is an index or, or a number of the row, and there is also uh, the number digit, numbered, numbered digit within each of the numbers. Okay, so it will be x11, x12, x13. So you see what I'm, I'm doing here? So, so that doesn't mean 11, 12, 13, 14. No, the, these two, two integers followed by each other. So, so we, we, it's, uh, you've seen matrices before? Matrices? So that's, that's, that's it. So it's a, uh, once again, it's a double indexed, double indexed uh, array of numbers. You may have seen it as say, how about double integration? Okay. 
So, uh, so uh, technically, you you are supposed to put a comma between between each of them, because once you get to ten, you you are uh, you, it will be confusing. So that's one five. Okay. So so uh, and then I, I keep going. X two one, X two two, X two three, X two four, X two five. Okay, x31, x32, x33, x34. So, so each real number is a sequence of digits. So, okay. Um, and then it, we end up with an array of, of, of digits. That's not making it any bigger though, right? Bigger than what? Than it was before. What do you mean bigger? Yeah, to infinitely many, but countably many. Countably many down and countably many to the right. So we know that there will be countably many ent entries. We just demonstrated that yesterday, right? So you can actually follow all of these, visit every location here, uh, uh, countably many. So, uh, so it remains countable. But how do we know that this is not countable? Well, how will we, know? We, don't, no, no, we don't want to say it's not countable. We assume that it's countable. We need to demonstrate there is a contradiction. Okay, so where is the contradiction? And the idea is, uh, is a uh, uh, contradiction with what? Uh, we, 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 we need to demonstrate that we are wrong and there are, or there is, we don't need many, there is a real number that's not on the list. That's the idea. But why wouldn't there be a real number that's on the list? Are you, like between zero and one? I thought there would be no uh, holes. No, they are all between zero and ones, uh, and there should be no holes. But th th that's not about the holes, really. Uh, it's not about density. It's not the way the, these numbers are distributed around the around the interval zero one. It is it is uh, entirely the assumption that we made, and we have to drive go at the contradiction through counting and nothing else, really. So we assume that there is a, a bijection, which means that the whole real numbers between 0 and 0 1 are put on the list, this list. Uh, we expanded them, all of them, as decimals, so creating this table of, of uh, digits. Uh, so each so digit meaning from 0 to 9, okay? And then the claim is where we have to demonstrate, to arrive to a contradiction, we have to demonstrate that there is a number not on the list. Yes. So a number between 0 and 1 that has not been listed. No, well, why, well, how do you know 0 is not there? What? There, there's no, you, you're thinking about, about real numbers being arranged in some particular way. And the, the real numbers are arranged between 0 and 1 in a particular way. But this, this list has nothing to do with it. We don't know what it is. It was an assumption. So there is some kind of list. It may be going like this, left, 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 right, left, right. And that how it happened, we don't know. We have to demonstrate that it's impossible, even though we don't know what that list is and how, how it goes. There is a list. We assumed it. Now we have to demonstrate that it's impossible. So we don't, don't know anything specific about these numbers. They, they, for example, uh, the very first number could be zero. I don't know. Or maybe it's not. Maybe it's 100. So if you don't know what's on the list, then how can we prove that there's not a number that's not on the By list? By being very smart. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it, it, it was, I believe it was, I believe it was Gauss. I believe it was Gauss who, who came up with this proof. So, uh, so we can actually point out the number which isn't there. We can build a number from these numbers that are unknown, but we, we take them and we build a new number and then we demonstrate that it's not there. Why? What? Why? 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 Yeah, can you assume there's like a why in this question? Uh, the, it's called the diagonal argument. And we're going to go uh, along the diagonal like this. OK? So uh, which will give us a new sequence of decimals. And we only need to ensure that it is not on the list. OK, so, so how? I need to make sure that there, so building 
build a new number x okay uh, make sure oh it's called y why not uh, make sure that's what we need to demonstrate that y is not equal to x1 y is not equal to x2 y not equal to x3 and so on if we can demonstrate that we're done right so it's not on the list it's a real number and it's not on the list on the list okay so so once we have this main idea that we're going to go diagonally so how do we ensure what should y1 be so we need to choose y1 first what should it be to make sure that y is not equal to x1 No, you, you don't go all the way. Let's do it one, one at a time, one digit at a time. So this is the very first digit of our number Y that we're building. And if it is Y1, which one should we pick? X11. No, then that exactly that's what we don't want. Because it's not supposed to be equal to X1. So if we choose Y1 not equal to X11, then we know that y is not equal to x1, right? Two numbers, the first digits are unequal, right? So they cannot be equal to each other, right? I just don't understand where any of this is going, to be honest. I don't know. It's going to demonstrate that the assumption was wrong and the reals are uncountable. We, we want to I would understand if you would be like, it's not countable because you can have so many different decimals within those things. It's like just... It would just keep going on and on, but I just don't understand how you can just say that that's not equal to that and that it's still, I, I don't know. Well, I mean, there, there are logical issues, and if you look, uh, you look I, around, you can find c c complaints of logicians uh, like about things it, like this. Like, how is it logical? I don't understand. Like, you, like I, when I say that, it's just like, the answer is like, it's logical. I don't Maybe understand. you are a constructionist. Some log logicians think that if, if you cannot construct it, it does not exist and you cannot use it for proofs. Mm -hmm. So some are very rigid this, this way. So, so if you think this is what we have been doing was, was too rigid, then well, some are even more rigid. So we, which problems, with, with the, they have their own problems because, because then there is no excluded middle uh, law. So we, we always have been assuming that it's some, a statement is true or it is false and there is nothing else. But if you cannot demonstrate it's true or false, then there's a third possibility, like unknown, but literally unknown. So you, can, you, cannot, uh, you cannot use, you cannot prove anything by contradiction. That's pretty much it. That's, that's those people are uh, the way they look at, at, at mathematics. We are just, it, it's, this is sometimes called naive set theory. Naive, so you ignore all the possible contradictions or, or, or paradoxes that we, you might encounter but you still have to learn it. So, uh, so let me finish the proof, uh, and then, then we'll, we'll see more, more at it, uh, a look at other things. Okay, so, so I'm building a number of digit by digit, uh, uh, making sure that it's not equal to x1, x2, x3, so I already have made sure that it's not equal to x1, uh, to x1, how I just picked my first digit in y1, not equal to x11, so two numbers have two, different digits in the first position, they cannot be equal to each other. Okay, and then I move on, I choose, I choose now Y2. Well, how would I choose, what Y2 do I choose? It doesn't equal to 1. No. Yeah, well, it doesn't Go down, down the diagonal. Two, two. Not equal to X2, 2. Okay, so that is the difference between the, my number Y and X2. Okay, so it demonstrate that y cannot be equal to x2. Okay, and keep going. So I choose y3 not equal to x3, 3, which proves that y is not equal to x3, and then I, I do it infinitely many times. So if you can, if you can force yourself, you know, thinking in, in terms of infinities, uh, but it's pretty much like a, it, it, so exhausting infinity uh, in infinitely many steps, and uh, you cannot literally carry out infinitely many steps, but 
uh, we assume that we do, and that's that's what calculus is based on anyway. Yes. So I understand the first assumption. Yeah. 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 What about the second one? Like, just because y two is not equal to the second digit, couldn't it be equal? No. To no. I mean, they have in the same position that they have different entries. They cannot be equal to each other. So like zero point one five, and then like, it's like say x two is zero point one five. The two, two, two real numbers are equal when all of the digits are equal, each one of them, with uh, some exceptions such as some limits. Okay? So, but you, you cannot write two, two of them side by side and, and uh, uh, they will be equal uh, only if every single one, every pair, you put one under the other and they have to have the exact same digits. That's, that's what make, make numbers equal to each other. Otherwise, what's the point of, of de 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 decimals if they're not you know, they don't capture the value of the, uh, of the, of the number. So anyway, after n steps, you choose xn, a uh, yn not equal to xn n, still moving along the diagonal, y is not, not equal to xn, and on and on. So altogether, if, if we manage to the, the carry out these infinitely many steps, uh, yn is not equal, y, y is not on the list. Okay, uh, that's a contradiction. Okay, so uh, the once again these infinities that you 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 free to question uh, that if we can handle infinities simultaneously, uh, and uh, you know like uh, uh, like uh, like it's already uh, exists rather than an infinitely far away from us, but the uh, calculus is based on that. So uh, you, you cannot really do calculus without uh, without sequences, without infinitely many sets, without real numbers. So all of that really creates creates uh, really hard questions that you cannot get around. But the problems are uh, uh, such as, well, here's one paradox that uh, early on appeared when set theory started to be developed in the late 19th century, uh, the, such as the set of all sets. What is this, the set of all sets? Is it a set? Does it include itself? You know, so then you have to include that that set into into itself. You know, and uh, and then that that's a contradiction, sort of a paradox of some kind. A set of all sets. You 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 have all the sets. You form a set that includes all of them, but that you realize that you should create a new create a new set. Well, there is no easy way out of it. Okay, so we'll just uh, continue next week. Well, where, uh, no, y is, has only one sequence. Y is one number, it has only one sequence of numbers along this uh, 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 line. We're moving along the diagonal, making sure that we're not repeating ourselves, not repeating the number that we're looking at. Okay, so you're just comparing like y1 to x11, and then y2 to x22, yes. and if they're equal, yeah. then that number is the same, but if they're not, no, I, I, I don't, I don't, I don't verify. I'm, I'm building one. I'm building one, one, one by one, one digit at a time. So I only have to look at these numbers in order to create one. Okay. Uh, so we can talk more about this next time.